and of course I had to try the Tram 28 it's like the one of the most popular trams a lot of tourists take but it's also a normal tram for the local people it gets crowded most of the time but it's a cool experience we got the airport here and I just gotta go all the way to the south So, I just arrived to Lisbon, Portugal, one of the oldest cities in Europe. And I'm so letting this place for a whole month and it's pretty nice. It has a whole living room, full kitchen, my own home office, a whole bedroom in the second floor with a bathroom. So it's such a nice place for one person. And it's true that right now, especially in summer, it's a little bit hard to get places. And this one is a bit expensive, but I'm in a great location. So right now, I'm just gonna try to settle and understand my way through Lisbon and just show you what is the whole boss about this place for digital nomads. First, of course, I had to try some coffee. And I found this place called Copenhagen Coffee Lab. It's supposed to have a few around the city. It's pretty nice, it's spacious. But one thing you gotta notice is that the Lisbon gets crowded pretty, pretty quickly. This coffee shop, all the tables got taken, so I'd rather leave now, do something else, but good coffee shop. Man. For grocers in downtown Lisbon, you don't have many options. There's only like the mini pressos. So I ended up spending around 16 euros for a few things that I'm gonna use for my meals at home. I'm actually gonna make a whole cost of living rundown of the whole month in Lisbon. It's gonna be at the end of the video. And the first thing, of course, is try some Portuguese food. And I found this place, it just has some of the most authentic Portuguese cuisines. First one, I'm trying this one that is called the Alentejejo soup. It's just like soaked bread with broth and a hard egg on top. And now for the main dish, I had to try the bacalao al gras, which is just cut fish, and they put some eggs, some potatoes, and a few things on it. Yeah, it's actually good. Yeah. My favorite way of transportation, this is this electric bike, because you can give it a little bit of push, and they automatically give you a better push so you can go faster. It's so much fun to go on a bike, to be honest. And that electric bike cost me around $3 to ride, so I think it's pretty affordable. Right now, here in Plaza de Restauradores, and I'm gonna meet a friend who's a tour guide. Welcome. She's gonna show us some of the secrets welcome. of Lisbon. Welcome to Lisbon and welcome to this experience. We start here in the neighborhood of Baixa. This neighborhood was rebuilt after a big catastrophe that happened here in the city in the year 1755. In 1147, Alushbuna becomes Lisboa, becomes a Catholic city. And nowadays, Moreria is what I like to call the most atypical, typical Portuguese neighborhood. Uh -huh. Calçada, together with the tiles, the azulejos, they're the two defining elements of the Portuguese architecture. Uh -huh. Ginginha, it's a cherry liqueur, but it's not just a cherry liqueur. Uh -huh. It's our grandparents' cure for all matter of illnesses. Saúde, may you have a wonderful time. So when you arrive to Lisbon, one of the first things you got to see is this one. This is the Praça de Comercio. It's like one of the most beautiful squares in Europe. And yes, there's a lot of tourists around. Like this is like the entry point for everyone. But it's just actually really nice. You have the sea just in front of you. But of course, I'm going to show you other areas of Lisbon that it feels more like a place to live for a longer time. So I'm going to check a few co-working spaces to do some work in Lisbon. And also meeting with some friends, Chris the freelancer. In Ivan, so we, we went to two before we went to that one. Yeah, and, and we did. Um, they both look good. The photos are like of an empty cafe, and they look big. Then you get there, and they're, they're, like so they're such, a, such a tiny cafe. I, know. I wonder, like, if you're so popular, why don't you expand? <laughs> like, <laughs> So these two places that I just checked outside and Selena, they're on board in Seattle, like one of the most popular areas in Lisbon. And these two places, they also have like the co-living and co-working spots, so you can just rent and with other nomads. And like outside is more professional, more like an apartment area, and Selena is more like hotel and hostel area, so it depends what you want. But yeah, both have really cool co-working, a lot of people working, so it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we ended up in the my favorite area of Lisbon, that is called Alfama. 
actually I lived here five years ago and this is my time to show you a little bit of this area it's like it's just beautiful so let's go explore a little bit so it turns out that every Tuesday and Saturday in Alfama there's a flea market like the whole street becomes an interesting flea market so if you want to buy souvenirs or any random stuff this is your spot yes and sometimes the streets are so narrow but it's kind of like the Alfama way no <laughs> it's just very interesting and you see that apartment over there way at the top that's where I used to live the first time and the best prego that you can find in Alfama is in this place called Madeira Pura so prego is a typical sandwich from Portugal I think it was made in Madeira that's why they make it so good and cheap fast and one of the best and I also got a ponche which is like one of the traditional drinks from Madeira really good and in the highest point on Alfama we have the San George castle just looking above the whole city has the cool thing about this place it has so many viewpoints because it's just it was a castle that it was made just before you know for when we had the medieval times it's just really nice to see how it was you know it's yeah I was just walking around and I found you guys some friends from safety wing <laughs> hi well thanks for joining too we're gonna check the fado it's one of the most uh, famous things to do here in, in Lisbon and at least in Alfama if we understand it, here's where it was created. So this is the website on nomadlist.com and here are the meetups so I just created one for Lisbon and look at that we're gonna have at least 27 people in the whole bar so yeah I'm excited to meet all the digital nomads. <laughs> Look who's there, look who's there. So yeah, the meetup was a lot of fun and I uploaded the pictures as you can see and this is all made through nomadlist.com. It's a whole website, you can see the best cities to travel and work online. You can also create your profile and, and tell where you've been, where you're gonna go. Especially you can see people that are let's say, in Lisbon right now. Look at how many people are there right now. And even we have Slack channel, we comment everything. So people are commenting about the whole meetup. Levels is actually the owner or the founder of Nomad List. So he was there in Lisbon too in the meetup. So if you want to meet the founder too, you can find it there. So subscribe to nomadlist.com because it's actually going to be very beneficial if you're a digital nomad slash remote worker. And yes, they are a sponsor of my channel. So thank you very much for sponsoring this video. So in Portugal it's very common to eat these pastéis de nata, this is like an egg crustar tart. You can see them all around the country. And I'm coming here to this one, it's supposed to be a little bit different than the other ones called pastéis de Belém. It does taste like the other ones, but it's good. Most of the Belen area is just close to the shore. They have this long, long, long boardwalk and there's so many things to do, like the massive sculpture of the uh, this monumental discoveries. And now we're checking the Belen Tower, just exploring. Like Belen, I think it's more about exploring and eating some pastéis de Belen. But yeah, let's keep exploring. So the whole LA LX factory is huge. There's tons of like warehouse. It just became a whole place. Look at that. So many places to discover. So of 
course, being a hipster area, I found some vegan spots, and this one is called Therapies. I just tried their vegan uh, bad thai. It was really good. And they even had some lemonade, like chai lemonade, like all the healthy things you can find in here, which is pretty cool to see that Lisbon has a variety of food. No? So Lisbon Digital Nomads um, started, well, it didn't start as formal as we're saying it now. Now we are the biggest meetup group in Portugal. We have launched over the last couple of years uh, a running meetup, an LGBT meetup. Uh, we have some um, board, game. board game night, we have some restaurant nights. Uh, and we, bring, we want to bring um, a platform for people to get to know Lisbon, to get to know the yeah. culture, to have an impact. Mm. Because we do a lot of impact in Lisbon to help the local businesses. We're now 10 organizers. Uh, and we still did a meetup every damn Thursday uh, without fail. And, and some people come to our meetups, we meet them, they tell us we're here for two weeks, and then two years later they're still there. <laughs> okay, so on the way to the Nomad meetup, I found this pretty cool underground just full of graffiti. Like, there's so many cool things around. Like, in other countries, it might look sketchy, but here's you can see like the ticket counter and everything. It's cool. Very, very interesting. We met uh, five years ago in Lisbon and see how it's growing so much and you have a whole community and you have volunteers and everything and tons of events happening every day. So yeah, like happy for you guys, pretty cool. Thank you. So yeah, if anybody wants to go to Lisbon to one of the meetups, meetup.com. Meet We're going to be here. <laughs> We're going to put the links there or meetup.com. We're going to find oh, Thank you. I just got a taxi that crossed me around the famous Golden Gate Bridge here in Lisbon and we're heading out to the also famous uh, Jesus Christ monument it's massive I'm telling you it's like the uh, Portuguese version of the Brazil ones pretty cool so in this part of the town there's two towns one is called Almada the other one is Casilhas I don't know if I'm pronouncing it well but it's just like cute small towns you can go eat something or the best thing I think just to walk around the shore because the views, again, the views everywhere here. And a cool thing that Castle has, this town way in the corner has a station, so you can take like a water taxi to get you to Kaisers other, where is the train station or like the main, the main station to go anywhere, no? It's pretty cool to have that, it's very handy. And the best way to enjoy the river in Lisbon is to actually go sell. Tagus, Tagus Lover. Tagus is the name of this river. Tagus. Ah, I see. Or Tejo in Portuguese. And Tagus Lover because we love the river. Um, quite safe boat, okay? It's a family cruising boat. So they are. So today I'm gonna show you what's a day in the life here in Lisbon and I have my home office here so I started the day checking email, checking what's the plan for today. So this is the view from my apartment. I can even see the tram passing by here. Alright, right now I'm gonna go explore the city a little bit. I'm actually meeting with some friends for coffee and some work together. So let's go. Oh, uh, no, it's fine. Okay. What up? Hey. hey. It's soft. It's like a tea, actually. Yeah. And yes, it's true that in Lisbon there's tons of hills, so 
lots of stairs, a lot of exercise every day. But I think it's part of the fun. It's very I'm getting tired right now. But if you need a lift, there's this funicular called ascensor. They're all around the city. And well, this one just takes you a few blocks up. We're just gonna take it because it's fun. It's a bit touristic, but I'm gonna show you a little bit. like even people just walk it but it's just a fun way to go up and down but then the benefits of being a little bit higher you see you can get these viewpoints of the city everywhere this one is a uh, Mirador de Santa Catarina and yeah it really has a cool view of the a little bit of the sea and a little bit of the city Sergio man hey, we're man. gonna go for a Portuguese task lunch so what is that it's one of my favorite spots secret just next to Avenida Liberdade mm -hmm. uh, and it's called Cantina de San Jose it's a local place uh, all of them are Portuguese meals you're gonna have your starter your coffee your main wine uh, <laughs> super cheap so it's good and this one is um, it's a hard, hard thing to pronounce what is that <laughs> Patia de Doge and now I'm meeting with my good Noma friends. Most of them are living here. I'm just gonna have some wine and enjoy the sunset all together and catch up. So. Oh, you're so cute! This is salami, tuna, yeah? And then this one is a uh, mushroom and spinach. <laughs> cheers shots. If you guys see my video, there are like this cheers. Yes, yeah, lots, lots of, cheers. of cheers. So for the nightlife, the best bars and restaurants are in Barro Alto. But if you go down to Baixa Shadow, if you're gonna go like full crazy mode, yeah, the Pink Street with the umbrellas and lots no. of bars. You know what I love when you just... Everywhere, you, like every now and a while, you can dance in the street. You have just people playing music and people dancing yeah, in the street, yeah, and I yeah. love it. It's so lo live. It's like Lisbon is so live at yeah. night. For coming. Uh, some cheers. Cheers. Mm. Just cheers. Yeah. And see uh, where, where else we go later. <laughs> hills, hills. How do you feel? Tired. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Lisbon life. Up, up and down, up and down. A lot of exercise. Alright, so today I woke up at 5 a.m. I went to the Rocio station to take the very first train and around 40 minutes it took me to Sintra, a small magical town that has these famous Moorish castles and we're gonna go and explore the whole day. See that? That's where I'm going next. This is the mini castle. Just below the palace and the walls, there's the whole town of Sintra, and it's pretty cute. It's actually a World Heritage Site by the UNESCO. And I also found this small restaurant. They have some bacalao. So, most of the cities in Europe are very packed in summer, and Lisbon is not an exception, especially now, because we have this, which is the Lisbon festivities. And there's like, Tons of things happening all this month. Today we're going to one of the Arraials, which that means the street festivities, and we're gonna check one of the main ones and uh, eat something and have some fun and check out the the whole festivities. There will be Portuguese people criticizing me because they have a different method, but I'm also Portuguese. So what I like to do is to start with this upper part and this part and just see where we get. Yeah. Now we gotta go in to hear the music with so many people. So many people. I don't know 
but the main event is happening today and we're celebrating the San Antonio and it's gonna be a whole mess the whole city <laughs> Antonio is like the bigger, like bigger celebration. Maybe because like of the romantic meaning and everything. And also they have like 16 couples that they pay for their weddings. So free wedding, free honeymoon, dress, everything as a way of like celebrating like the big day. We are actually here with my friend Naiva and we're checking out the whole Monsanto which is like a it's like the long of Lisbon it's like four times the size of Central Park. But yeah we also found a view of the city plus a windmill and a random basketball court. Well, like the guy that, the, the is. Very nice thank you thank you for that we just randomly play with a guy basketball it was a lot of fun. I found out this amphitheater that's the name of this area here in Monsanto it's beautiful like just people just hanging out chilling yes. and just below the Monsanto Park there's this beautiful district called Campo de Rique and it feels more like a local vibe I've seen some people like playing chess older people and also I just found a market in the main plaza and there's like a vegan place to try the pastage de nata so I'm just curious to see the difference instead of eggs has like plant-based milk and flour it does have less creamy style but Good, approve it. And of course, I had to try the Tram 28. It's like the, one of the most popular trams. A lot of tourists take, but it's also a normal tram for the local people. But it's just a fun uh, way to to see most of the areas of Lisbon. That's the tram experience. It gets crowded most of the time, but it's a cool experience, especially because it's my last day. So I'm just having like a recap of all the things that I've done here. You see when it's midday, look at this line. Look at this massive line for the Crown 28. This is crazy. This is like, I dropped her phone. So this is Santa Justa. Santa Justa lift. No? Yeah. And you, you told me the other day that the best way to get here mm -hmm. is if you get to the cathedral instead of waiting right. on the line down there, right? And we're gonna try what? So, pastel de bacalao, like a bacalao cake, right? Like a cod fish cake. It's super special because um, cod fish in Portugal, it's very famous. As much as they have 365 ways of cooking it, yeah. this is like... Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> and we're heading to the Carmel Convent to see a famous night show about this one. Wow. You're so hot. I needed an ice cream. So this is 
is the Karkavelo beach. It's like 30 minutes away from Lisbon by train. And it's the most famous because it's a beautiful, like long, long strip of uh, beach. And there you can play volleyball. You can do some surfing. They have some classes here too. It's just a good uh, break from the city, you know? So yeah, I gotta spend the whole day here just chilling. To be honest, the water is a bit cold. So I don't think I'm gonna swim today. I'm getting one of my last coffees in this small coffee shop that I found very close to my place called Flat Cafe. They don't have Wi-Fi, so it's not a laptop-friendly place, but good breakfast, good coffee. It's been great. This one, it's, it's a great place. I'm actually kind of sad to leave because there's so many things to do in Lisbon. Hey, thank you for watching the video Lisbon Portugal as a digital nomad. I hope it was inspiring and helped you decide if you want to go there. The cool thing about Lisbon, I mean, that is in Europe, you know, but it's way, way in the west of Europe, you can see here. And if you're coming from America, there's usually a lot of direct flights from the United States. Sometimes from New York, you just go direct to Lisbon, which is pretty cool. And then if we go some in in the whole city, you can see that, um, yeah, this is the whole Lisbon. This is the downtown area. This is like the most touristic park and Alfama where I stayed before, which I really loved. But this time I stay in Bairro Alto on all, all this area. And then uh, Caiso do Sobre is the train station that takes you all the way, like all this part. This is the bridge, uh, the docks, some people playing paddle over there. Um, this is the long of uh, Lisbon, as I said, you see how massive it is. And if we also zoom out a lot, you can see all, all the beaches areas and Sintra. That's why it took like 40 minutes by train to get there. I will have a link on the description with all the recommendations that I have. Some of them were not in the video because you know, they, it would be a long, long video. And here's the cost of living in Lisbon. Like right now, a dollar to Europe is like one one, so it's kind of the same. And the house was the most expensive part. A lot of the transportation, I was really surprised that I spent a lot of money moving around, especially with the Ubers and Bolts. And uh, yeah, some of the other experiences, like you can see, it wasn't that much for being a European's place. So, and also please don't forget to subscribe to nomadlist.com because they are the sponsor of my channel. And you can see like right now, Lisbon is the first one and all the information about Lisbon. And also Nomadlist has this thing that is called rebase.co, like CEO, and you can get your Portuguese residency. Like if you wanna live in Portugal for a long time, you can go here and apply. Like you have, a, uh, you go through a whole process, they contact you with lawyers and things like that. And yeah, you can become like a Portuguese resident if that's where you're interested. And maybe I'll make more videos about other places in uh, Portugal, like Ericeira, Porto, somewhere else. Just let me know in the links in the description if you're interested in more Portugal videos. But that's it. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget, please, to subscribe, give it a like, and just give me a comment. It's going to help with the traction and more people will be able to see this video. All right, see you in the next one. Ciao.